Welcome to the final video on the ALBOP FAQ. So next is our over-the-counter medications. So first question, may syringes be sold in Alabama without prescription? Yes, syringes may be sold in Alabama without prescription. There are a few states which still require prescriptions as part of the paraphernalia laws. Some states have age restrictions on prescription syringes. A pharmacist always has the right to deny any sale which the pharmacist believes is not appropriate, however. But yes, you can buy without prescription. What are the Alabama restrictions on the state sale of ephedrine or pseudoephedrine containing products? So these products must be sold by a pharmacist by a pharmacy licensed by Albop from behind the counter, and a person may purchase no more than 3.6 grams per calendar day and no more than 7.5 grams per 30 days. That's Alabama law. Purchaser must be at least 18 years of age and provide a valid on suspended driver's license or non driver ID card issued by one of the 50 states. Does Alabama law require a wet signature or hand signed signature on prescriptions given to the patient for non controlled drugs? Uh, so every written prescription issued in the state by licensed practitioner and the, so, and the practitioner shall communicate the instructions to the patients to the pharmacist by signing on the appropriate line it does not limit the prescription to a controlled substance only so yes everything needs a wet signature and that includes like via fax it has to be wet you have to, they have to print it out sign it and then, and then fax it for it to be a wet signature. And this is a direct quote that I've actually seen on a few websites, but it goes like, I can, I can tell you that anytime a prescription is printed out from a fax machine and provided to a patient to take to a pharmacy or defaults to a pharmacy's fax machine for filling, it is not an electronic prescription. That prescription becomes an original hard copy prescription and it must be, it must have an original or wet signature on it. That means that it's faxed to the pharmacy, or it is understood that it was default to the pharmacy's fax machine. You must stop the transmission of the prescription, sign the prescription, and then you may send it on to the pharmacy. You stated that the patients are advising that the prescriptions are not full, not being honored by the pharmacy. When this is the case, you can you need to sign the EMR prescription before giving it to the patient. That was a direct quote. So prescribing controlled substance, your FAQ does. What are the requirements for Schedule II controlled substances? Require a written prescription, which must be manually signed by the practitioner, or the or an electronic prescription that meets all DEA requirements for electronic prescriptions for controlled substances. Is there a time limit for, within which a Schedule II prescription must be filled after being signed by a practitioner? No, but pharmacists should use their professional judgment. Is there a limit to the quantity of controlled substances dispensed with to a 30-day supply? No. While some states and many insurance carriers limit the quantity of controlled substance dispensed to a, to a 30 day supply. There is no expressed federal limits with respect to the quantities of drugs dispensed via prescription. However, the amount of dispense must be consistent with the requirements that the prescription for a controlled substance be issued only for a legitimate medical purpose by a practitioner acting under the usual course of professional practice. Is an oral order for a Schedule II controlled substance permitted? No, only in emergency situations. For a resident of a long term care facility, hospice, home health care services, physician must provide a hard copy of the prescription within seven days. If they do not, the pharmacist is responsible for contacting the DEA. So what items may be changed on a Schedule II prescription? Since there are no direct rulings in Alabama pharmacy statutes, Alabama pharmacists may refer to the DEA Divergent website, which states a pharmacist may change or add the dosage form, drug strength, drug quantity, directions for use, or issue date only after consultation with an agreement of the prescribing practitioner. Dates for prescriptions which are dated for later fill may not be changed even after consultation with and, per and permission of the prescribing physician. So what information is required on a prescription for a controlled substance? A prescription for a controlled substance must include the following information. Date of issue, patient's name and address, patient practitioner's name, address, DA registration number, drug name, drug strength, dosage form, the quantity prescribed, directions for use, number of refills, if any, and manual signature of the prescriber. A prescription must be written in ink or typewritten or pencil and manually signed by the practitioner with a pencil that can't be erased though. 
An individual may be designated by the practitioner to prepare the prescriptions for his or her signature. The practitioner is responsible for making sure that the prescription confirms all essential aspects of the laws and regulations. May prescriber use an electronic signature in preparing a prescription. So in Alabama, a prescription which is printed or prepared in the prescriber's office for a controlled drug may not have a signature from a printer or an electronic signature. It has to have the wet signature. Can controlled substance prescriptions be refilled? Schedule 2 cannot be refilled. Schedules 3 and 4 can have 5 refills in 6 months. Is it permissible to dispense a prescription for a quantity less than the face amount prescribed, resulting in greater number of dispensions than the number of refills indicated? Yes, partial refills for Schedules 3 and 5, controlled substance pre prescriptions are permissible under federal regulations provided that each partial filling is dispensed and recorded in the same manner as a refilling. The total quantity of dispensed in all partial fillings does not exceed the total quantity prescribed, and no dispensing occurs after six months. Can controlled substance prescriptions for hospice patients be faxed to a pharmacy? A prescription written for Schedule II narcotic substance for a patient enrolled in a hospice program with Medicaid or a hospice program which is issued by the state may be sent via fax. A pharmacist may dispense directly a controlled substance listed in Schedules 3, 4, 5 or a written prescription signed by the practitioner via fax. Is it appropriate to provide a DEA registration number on prescriptions written for medications other than controlled substances? Basically, no, you don't want to use these as uh, the DEA number as identification. There is an NPI number now. What changes may a pharmacist make to prescription written for a controlled substance in Schedule 2? So DEA published a federal register. The final rule entitled multiple prescriptions for Schedule 2 controlled substances. In the preamble is that rule, DEA say that the essential elements of the Schedule 2 prescription written by the practitioner, such as the name of the controlled substance, strength, dosage form, and quantity prescribed may not be modified orally. So you cannot do this for Schedule 2. However, the instructions contained in this rule's preamble are in opposition to DEA's previous policy, which permitted the same changes a pharmacist may make to Schedules 3, 4, and 5. Controlled substance prescriptions after oral consultation with the prescriber. DA recognizes the resultant confusion regarding this conflict and plans to resolve the matter through a future rule making. Until next time, pharmacists are instructed to adhere to state regulations or policy regarding those changes that a pharmacist may make in Schedule 2 prescriptions after oral consultation with the prescriber. So, just if we just learned, you can do all those things here in Alabama and probably most states. So, therefore, when information is missing, form, or needs to be changed in a Schedule II controlled substance, DEA expects the pharmacist to use their professional judgment and knowledge of state and federal laws and policies to decide whether it is appropriate to make changes to that prescription, in which case you probably would call and make them. So what changes may a pharmacist make to a prescription written for a controlled substance in Schedule III to V? A pharmacy may, assist, may add, change the patient's address upon verification. The pharmacist may add or change the dosage form, dose, str drug strength, drug quantity, directions for use, or issue date only after consultation with and agreement with the prescribing practitioner. Such consultations and corresponding changes should be noted by the pharmacist or the pres on the prescription. Pharmacists and practitioners must comply with the state and local laws, regulations, on policies prohibiting any of these changes to controlled substance prescriptions. The pharmacist is never permitted to make changes to the patient's name, controlled substance prescribed, except for generic substitution, or the practitioner's signature. Can a practitioner prescribe methadone for the treatment of pain? So it, there is no law restricting the prescribing, dispensing, or administration of Schedule 2, 3, 4, 5 narcotic medications, including methadone for the treatment of pain, if such treatment is deemed medically necessary by the registered practitioner acting in the usual course of professional practice. So <clears throat> remember that is a drug commonly used for narcotic treatment programs. So if it's used for addiction, they do need that DEA special number. Can an individual return his or her controlled substance prescription medication to a pharmacy? No. You'd want to use like a take back place or something along those lines. Under what conditions may a controlled substance prescription C3 to C5 be issued electronically? Yes, you may accept e-prescribed controlled drugs 
in order in order for a controlled prescription to be valid electronically, both the prescriber and pharmacy must have DA approved software. So what changes can be made to a C2 prescription? So federal, when information is missing from or needs to be changed on a Schedule II controlled substance prescription, DEA expects pharmacists to use their professional judgment and knowledge of state and federal laws policies to decide whether it is appropriate to make changes to that prescription. For state, a pharmacist may add or change the patient's address upon verification. A pharmacist may add or change dosage form, drug strength, drug quantity, or directions for use or issue date only after consultation with and agreement with the prescribing practitioner. Any consultation and changes should be documented by the pharmacist or the prescription. So what changes may be made to a C3 or C5 prescription? So C3, 4, and 5, a pharmacist may add, change, dosage form, strength, quanti quantity, directions, issue date, or patient address only after speaking with a prescriber and documenting on the prescription. If the prescription is missing the prescriber's signature, the pharmacist must then forfeit the written prescription and take a new one verbally and reduce it to writing for C3, 4, and 5. All right, I'll post one more video after this one. It should be the last part.